In a previous video, I told the history of Nazi Germany's most exotic military unit, the Turkestan Legion, recruited from Central Asian peoples in what is now Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and so on. This got me thinking. If the Germans used Asians, did their ally, the Japanese, use any Caucasians? The answer is, surprisingly, an emphatic yes. It sounds like an incredible, almost unbelievable claim, but I'm deadly serious. During World War II, Japan had a brigade composed almost entirely of Europeans. How this came to be is an extraordinary story, considering the violent xenophobia of the Imperial Japanese Army to all Caucasians that it encountered during the war, but it is nonetheless true. Japan, like Germany, was prepared to look the other way regarding questions of race when it was militarily expedient. How Europeans ended up in the service of the Imperial Japanese Army is relatively simple to answer. They were from one national group that literally had nowhere else to go. They were refugees and the remains of a once proud military that had been swept away by revolution. The White Russians. When I say White Russian, I am not referring to race, but to politics. Following the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia in 1917, Russia withdrew from World War I and a civil war broke out across its vast empire. On the one side were the Bolsheviks, the Red Russians, and on the other elements of the old Russian army, still loyal to Tsar Nicholas II and the Romanov dynasty. These were the White Russians. Although the Whites received military support from Britain and the United States, ultimately they failed to depose Lenin and the Bolsheviks. The Tsar and his entire family were murdered in 1918. Unable to remain in Russia, tens of thousands fled via Siberia to China, becoming stateless refugees. They settled in Shanghai and other cities on the East Coast, where aristocratic former Tsarist officers sold their military skills to local Chinese warlords, as China itself was unstable and riven by corruption and regional conflicts. The Europeans, who controlled several treaty ports along the Chinese coast, also made use of Russian soldiers. For example, the city of Shanghai, ruled by a council of foreign powers led by Britain and the United States, created a Russian regiment as part of the Shanghai Volunteer Corps, the SVC, the local defense force. Within this city of three and a half million Chinese was another city, the foreign settlement, made up of the French concession and the well-known international settlement. There, the various powers, including Great Britain, the United States and Japan had stationed detachments of troops, Japanese, British, French, and our own United States Marines to assist the police of the Shanghai Municipal Council in the preservation of peace and order and to protect the boundaries of the international settlement. The SVC was founded by the Municipal Council and contained British uniformed troops organized into national companies. There were a couple of British infantry companies, a Shanghai Scottish company, and an American company, among others. The Shanghai Russian Regiment was an adjunct to the Shanghai Municipal Police, a well-trained and well-disciplined military force used to control the local population. When Japan took over Manchuria in 1931, the coal-rich northern provinces of China, they established a garrison force to control the local population there, called the Guangdong Army. There was a sizable refugee white Russian community in the region, centered on the city of Harbin. Many Russians fought for Japanese local militias, earning a good reputation for military proficiency and bravery. The Japanese realized that they could use the Russians in helping them to defend their new border with the Soviet Union that ran along the Manchuria-Mongolia frontier. It is no exaggeration to state that Japan in the early to mid-1930s viewed the USSR as its greatest foe, not Britain or America, and they worried that Stalin might invade Manchuria for its resources as they themselves had done.
In 1932, the Japanese, to attempt to legalize their conquests, invited the former emperor of China, Puyi, who had lost his throne in a revolution in 1912 to become emperor of Manchuria. Puyi was chosen by the Japanese because the last imperial dynasty of China, the Qing, were themselves Manchurian and had seized power from the Ming dynasty in 1644. But Puyi soon found that he was nothing more than a Japanese puppet and was powerless to stop the Japanese from ruthlessly and violently exploiting Manchurian people and resources. The Japanese changed the name of Manchuria to the Empire of Manchukuo, creating an army and a police force. In 1938, the Japanese decided to centralize their many Russian volunteers into a new unit, the Azano Brigade. Major Makoto Azano of the Japanese army was given the task of creating the White Russian unit. He would become part of the new Manchurian puppet state military, the Imperial Manchukuo Army, a 100,000 strong force of variable quality and reliability. The Azano Brigade, which would eventually number some 3,500 White Russians, was probably the best part of the Manchukuo Army. In order to assist with the recruitment, the Japanese approached the former Tsarist general Vladimir Kozmin, head of the Russian Fascist Party in China, to raise units himself. In this way, many young Russian recruits joined. The recruits had mostly been born in China to Russian refugee parents, and most were not old enough to have served in the Tsar's army. They wore Japanese Type 98 infantry uniforms, their caps adorned with the multicolored badge of Manchukuo, and they were issued with Japanese Type 32 cavalry sabers, Arasaka 38 rifles, and Type 14 Nambu pistols. Headquartered at Urchan, near the Sungari River, the Azano Brigade's job was infiltration and sabotage, as well as more mundane patrolling and guarding. Members often dressed in Red Army uniforms and crossed into Soviet territory to spy and sometimes blow things up or kill Soviet troops. The border incidents came to a dramatic head in 1939 when the Imperial Japanese Army attempted to assert domination over the Manchuria-Mongolia border region. Fighting broke out along the Kalka River in Mongolia, and at the Battle of Nomonhan, General Gheorghe Zhukov decisively defeated a Japanese army, ending Japanese aggression in the region. A unit of 250 white Russians from the Azano Brigade fought in the campaign. During World War II, the Azano Brigade remained part of the Guangdong Army, spying on the Soviets and combating communist guerrillas. In 1943, the unit's name was changed, becoming the Russian military unit of the Imperial Manchukuo Army, and from 1944, Cossack Colonel Smirnov was in command. At war's end, the unit numbered 4,000 men. D-Day for the White Russians came in August 1945, when Stalin, as per agreements reached with the United States and Britain, struck in the Far East. Operation Autumn Storm witnessed the battle-hardened Red Army invade Manchukuo and Korea, the depleted Japanese Guangdong army unable to stop the Blitzkrieg. The Soviet invasion placed the White Russians in a very difficult position. It is said that some swapped sides at the last minute and cooperated with Soviet interior troops from the NKVD, some of whom had been parachuted behind Japanese lines in return for immunity from arrest. However, the White Russians were tricked and later arrested and punished, the officers facing show trials in Siberia. However, credible witnesses have also shown that the Japanese turned on the White Russians at the end of the war. At the city of Harbin, Japanese troops, fearful of the Russians' loyalties, marched a large disarmed unit out of the city and then shot or bayoneted to death all its members. Those members of the Azano Brigade who survived the battles were then swept up by the Soviets and disappeared into the Gulag system, largely never to be seen again. So ended the story of Japan's white soldiers, 
a refugee army of divided loyalties, stuck in an Asia in turmoil and conflict. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.